example here to my computer. Go to F. Go to Documents. Go to go back actually. Go to pictures here. CG 3D modeling. Importing from DAS. And um, pretty much continue from this project here. Go ahead and create a new folder. Um, call it mocap. It'll hold all our mocap data for us, and we'll choose that folder. And uh, that'll pretty much give us all our exports to that folder. So everything's really nicely organized. Uh, for all you DAS users out there, uh, this poser, the DAS um, export, does a really good job of just automatically importing in your pose and giving you some really, really nice feedback. However, the issues I had with it were that it also imported in the head rotations. I haven't quite figured out how to get rid of those. Um, so depending upon how you bob and weave your head and whatnot, you might run into some issues where the neck just moves a little bit too much. Um, I'm not good enough in DAS, nor do I necessarily want to be to try to manually come in there and fix uh, rotation issues and position issues. I'd rather do it in a uh, more comprehensive tool like Cinema 4D. That's the reason why we imported our character in Cinema 4D to begin with. So, um, with all these selections made, um, for those of you who are familiar with uh, video recording or uh, audio production, Pro Tools or Premiere Pro, things like that. Um, apparently Brake was very familiar with it too because he made that shortcut the spacebar. Um, very common shortcut for starting uh, starting recording playback or just playing back something um, which is pretty awesome. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take off my glasses like so and then um, as I talk to you guys, uh, we'll basically use um, what I'm saying right now as our current uh, motion capture data. Um, so as you can see, the, uh, the face uh, comes onto the screen. I've backed away from the connect enough that I get a, uh, a nice depth. Um, I'm fully white in the, uh, the right channel, or at least I assume I am. Um, I'm, like I said, blind as a bat <laughs> without my glasses on, um, even at this distance. Um, your face lights up with a uh, yellow mask of sorts. Um, basically, uh, the Kinect reads uh, some facial features, your lips and your eyes and your nose, and uh, it derives data based off of that. Um, tools like Face Shift, uh, which uh, just recently finished up their beta um, program, uh, use this data a little bit more advanced to derive um, some indirect data about other morphs uh, through a number of initial morphs uh, created by the structure of your face through the uh, through the point cloud. It's a very very sophisticated tool. We'll be using that in a later tutorial to uh, go over the soft image workflow, which uh, produces a much more comprehensive uh, facial animation. But this is great because you can use this animation really quickly to uh, drive some DAS morphs and quickly get animation onto your characters and get things out to clients really, really fast. This could be very useful for uh, some abstract animation, like uh, some motion graphics uh, with some interesting face uh, animation properties. Um, it captures blinks. It, uh, very very nice it's just reading all that data in and it's just recording it alright so we've pretty much captured enough data uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording I could have hit spacebar to do that and uh, that should be pretty much it for break or pro phase um, if we come into actually create another Windows Explorer window, keyboard shortcut Win key E for you PC users. Um, 
and if I come into 3D modeling and importing from DAS and I go to my mocap as you can see I've got my wave file which is uh, the recording of what I was saying I've got my text capture data and I've got my FBX data um, terribly unfortunate I can't use this FBX data it's very very small very very concise um, text data is a little bit bigger so it could be a little bit tougher to deal with um, and then of course aligning the uh, the screen capture with the uh, wave data in Cinema 4D using some tracks um, will allow us to pretty much completely finish our animation in Cinema 4D. Um, all right. So before we get back in here into Cinema 4D, we need to do a little bit of um, edits to our text data and um, things to prepare for uh, the eventual import of that data here into Cinema 4D. Um, once again, I have a unique layout set up for this particular purpose. Um, my scripting layout here just uh, has the script manager docked to the side here so I can easily uh, manipulate my script over here and I can kind of sort of see the effect on the object manager. Um, Understanding this code is not important. <clears throat> However, uh, this is a Python script. Um, a little bit of a quick overview. Um, basically, import in the Cinema 4D library, import some of the Cinema 4D GUI elements, and import in um, the uh, Python scripts, uh, Python scripting languages, CSV uh, importer scripts create a few arrays for my data uh, then I've created a uh, function that'll actually go through and um, read the data um, tab delimited style uh, the data actually was organized very nicely by Brakel into a uh, tab delimited format so you can pretty much open it up in Excel and kind of just sort of see what the data looks like um, uh, using the tab character I pretty much read in a for loop through all of that data um, and basically output it to these uh, arrays. Um, then I have another function called insert keys which uh, does some really complicated uh, C4D scripting stuff. It gets the FPS, creates some uh, animation tracks on a user data field that we're going to create um, and then it goes through and it uses that track to pretty much add a key uh, from each track in each one of these uh, in each one of these arrays and then our main function pretty much just goes through figures out what the names of the uh, the name descriptions of the uh, different animation controls are on our uh, user data and if they match these certain values here um, which relate to break goal Profaces uh, export, um, then it will open up this function and it will basically add keys to that particular track. Um, then it just refreshes the scene and we pretty much get a nice uh, representation of our data as usual. Um, I might go into a more detailed tutorial on how I actually went about creating this script in more detail, but that's pretty much how the script works. Um, you can literally hit execute once you have the correct object selected and it will automatically import your data. However, the script needs to be formatted in a certain way in order for, or the data needs to be formatted in a certain way in order for us to work with this script. So, we can come over here to Brickle. Um, we can come over here to our uh, mocap data folder and we've got our text file which we can open in notepad by default and because the file is a little massive it's a uh, 33 megs um, even after all these years uh, Windows 98 and onward um, actually I've been using Windows PC since Windows 3.1 so a little bit more history um, 
I remember the 16-bit days um, dealing with things like QBasic and stuff but um, yeah notepad hasn't changed at all it still doesn't really efficiently use memory um, tries to load everything in at once and uh, you know it takes it a couple of seconds to load up the data um, I could use a different text editor and uh, being a power user I probably should take the time to go ahead and get one but I just find the installation process and just trying to find one and trying to remember what that setup file was to be a little tedious so I just deal with notepads uh, terrible performance um, doesn't really take too much time off of what I'm trying to do normally I would do some other setup while I waited for notepad to pretty much finish what it was doing but anyway we scroll through this notepad or this uh, this file from Brickle Proface. Um, see, it doesn't actually have any licensing information or anything. Yeah, normally it would show your license there. Um, who it was licensed to? Um, here it has your uh, shape units. I guess these are your uh, these would be your static units where your face was statically at prior to animation starting to happen. Uh, these are animation unit names um, for your AU is pretty much what's going to drive your uh, your morphs. And uh, interesting thing about these is they match the names of these uh, descriptive user data values that uh, we have in this script here, which uh, begs the uh, the obvious uh, answer that yes, we're going to have to create some user data that's going to be able to take these animation units. Um, then there's a bunch of other data in here that's not really necessary. Um, the most important thing about this workflow is uh, with Notepad you can hit Control F and uh, in Windows you can pretty much hit Control F to find anything in any app. So it's a, it's a global shortcut for the most part. Um, we can type in animation here and search down and uh, we immediately will come to the animation units frame data in here. Um, these animation frame units are separated by tab, so it's tab delimited, which is awesome. Um, we pretty much, for this to work, just need to take from frame and values here, which is basically our header line in our CSV here. Um, if this were to be imported in Excel, this would pop up as the first row. And then each row under these would be the second row. Um, so this zero right here, or this one right here, rec uh, are indicative of the frame. And then the values, each value is indicative of each one of these animation units. And they're pretty much in order exactly as I have them here so we don't necessarily have to create our user data the same way because luckily the script can just look up it can as long as every single piece of data is there it's great the script um, automatically will read the data appropriately in um, this function here it it reads the data in the appropriate order that needs to be read so it's um browse entered up first then browse enter down then outer up and that's pretty much what this data represents you know the, uh, the browse enter up here browse enter down browse outer up browse outer down and uh, it's pretty much theta values uh, one or zero to one so one being a hundred percent zero being uh, um, no uh, no change in the morph all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select. We're going to go ahead and move down. And we're pretty much just going to. I found that if you move your mouse like this, left and right, you tend to be able to kind of sort of pick data a lot faster here in Notepad. Um, we could go through and we could try to figure out exactly. where this ends in the future so that we could just immediately